either Einstein or Grossman, but uh, and maybe uh, two of them made a mistake. Uh, and that was corrected in 1915 by Einstein. And that leads to general relativity. So basically, uh, there are fluctuations and dissipations. So in the discovery, it's not a straight line. Right? You, you need fluctuation in order to, and also sometimes you need dissipation uh, to just don't look at a certain part. And you get something which includes the right thing, and uh, people will sort out the right thing at the end. Oh, 
Oh, that, that, that was a heel foot. Also, I need a uh, nose stem. No strong. Uh, uh, I'm not sure, so I have to. Is that uh, what, what was Is it? it has a uh, uh, migration from what he said? No, no, no the uh, migration from what he said. Oh, oh, it yes, me. has, but at that time I do not know. Okay, like, uh, I have to find out. Uh, but it, it did have a Lagrangian formulation for the Nordstrom theory. Yes. But also, I mean, Lorenz had a Lagrangian formulation for Hilbert and, and Doste, but they didn't find the correct result. I mean, the Lagrangian formalism was used by Lorenz, by Doste, a student of Lorenz. By Nordstrom, I didn't know, but then if you say. No, 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 but I'm saying used it later. No, no, 1912. 1912, you can find some of those papers. Uh, but later he said, well, a physicist shouldn't care about the yeah. variation of principle, but <laughs> only about the field <laughs> equation. Yeah. These are Einstein's sure. statements. <laughs> now I'm not completely <laughs> sure when he did this statement. But, and, and then when he found GR and Hilbert found it at the same time, more or less. Uh, a little bit earlier. Then he suddenly recognized it's important, and then he wrote a paper, and this is the paper which is often quoted, uh, uh, Hamilton's Principle in General Relativity, which came out in 1916 already. So it was his quick reaction to the proof of Hilbert. This was very clear. So Einstein was against, first against the higher mathematics, a la Minkowski, and then against variational principles. But you know, he, he, he learned. But this statement which he made in favor uh, that he used it, when was that? In, in uh, the cross one, uh, the take of the, take the, what is it called? Uh, in both of them. Um, yes, that. If you'll find, you, you try to use variational principles there. Okay. And you know, even in the November 4th paper of, of 1915, he's using, he also you made some argument using variational principles. He didn't have the right one. But he didn't spell it out. And he, and he, did, he didn't make that his key argument, but it's actually also included in there. See, uh, so it, it wasn't like Einstein didn't know about variational principles. He, 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 he didn't have the same degree of confidence in, in, in finding things. Although, I mean, they, they were sort of 
getting it, but not quite. It took eventually from Einstein to Hilbert to Klein to Nutter to, to clarify. So, okay. Okay. so that's the genesis is a lot of vacation in Spain. <laughs> Second question. <laughs> Second question is a convention. Maybe you mentioned, but uh, you add a tilt uh, over the connection and reach and the curvature. Is this special meaning or is just a the just the Riemannian space? Later on, I there a in, in, in Riemann pattern space where I use the same letters but not the tilt. Okay. That's just uh, some notation. Some people make a small circle or. Some people might take exactly the opposite conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw this in mind, so the Christoffel brackets, uh, you know. Oh! Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's, uh, it's like this. You could, uh, I first try just to, to take such a parenthesis uh, uh, which we take for the Christopher symbol. You know, Christopher symbol is usually, uh, before it was written, it's gamma, which is, uh, it was written in this way. Yeah. So you have this curly. <laughs> <laughs> so what I try to do is uh, to use that and that. But in LaTeX, this, uh, this doesn't look nice, and so, yeah. so I took the key. <laughs> Physicist, price is the book, but you have to take your time. You know, it's, it's, it's not easy reading. I mean, it's, but it's beautiful and, and complete, fairly complete, I would say, uh, in this interpretation. So, so from this question and Hilbert's variation of things, for if you go from Hilbert's variation, when you come directly to the, uh, uh, the nowadays form. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yes. so I guess uh, Hilbert has. Certain amount of independent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, from that side, uh, yes. Certainly. Yeah, but otherwise, uh, I think it looks as if he had, had the equation first. But you, you should know that Hilbert published his paper 10 days earlier than Einstein. But uh, apparently, he read corrections later than Einstein's paper was already out, and so in the corrections, he, he uh, well, he changed some. some wording and some formulas and it's not quite clear uh, how, the correct, uh, how the paper looked before these really? corrections, I mean, but, but this is all one can, can say historically and then there is a dispute who, who got this uh, uh, turn of curves. Yeah. I think uh, the evidence is in favor of people because he knew variational principles very well and this was, uh, it's not a big problem to calculate and it would fit into this. Uh, uh, but uh, whatever the details are, Hilbert 
is covered in any case, whatever the, uh, the other things is, that the Einstein equation uh, that you have um, the variational principle that he, um, if V is the, the over the G is, uh, is it minus E L meta over the G and we recognize this as energy momentum tensor. Um, and the question is only whether he explicitly actually calculated that. Actually calculated if that's a curvature scalar, this or not. You know, this is the question. But it's not the question that he found this. Yeah. The, the, the real question is no question. No question he had this equation. Yes. But the question is, did he actually calculate the Exactly. Side? This is a question. That's, right? that's unknown. And there, is, and there was a paper which was widely spread by Stetchel and Corey and who was the third guy? Ren. Ren and, yeah. and um, other people found that they refer to the corrections of Hilbert, which which exist in the library of Göttingen, but the main page which they photographed in their article was mutilated. It was, some pieces were cut out. And this was not mentioned in this article, which was supposedly uh, a scientific article. And this is certainly a, a, a mistake which a historian should not do. Yeah. And so, I mean, in my eyes, uh, this discredits these people. Uh, not um, afterwards, they never explained why they didn't mention it. I mean, I looked at this, um, I was in the library in Göttingen and looked at it myself. I mean, I saw there was a cut out piece. Now, there was an analysis by some other physicists, by um, um, Tilman Sauer, I think it was, um, who said perhaps Hilbert cut it out for purposes in presenting it in a notebook or whatever. I mean, there were different theories uh, how one could understand that, uh, but, but I mean, okay, I mean, for us physicists, that's not so important. I mean, the field equations were there in 1915. Uh, Gilbert and Einstein had it more or less at equal time, who found now this and that is, is and, and the definition of the energy momentum tensor is certainly due to Gilbert, and that's very important for understanding yes. this. And this is either due to uh, the explicit Expansion is either due to Hilbert or Einstein. Hilbert was 10 days earlier, that he really found it 10 days earlier, uh, put it in, in the correction is not clear. But the historical arguments against Hilbert are written in a paper which is not uh, a correct paper because it uh, uh, doesn't I, tell I, the I whole rules. We should look at this, this one by Hilbert Sauer more carefully. Yes, and, and I, I, know, I know people who discovered that and went into the library that this is, was mutilated. That, uh, yes. And this paper was, was published by statue, was published in Science, and Science rejected um, the, uh, the corrections which this physicist made. They said that's a thing for um, um, a scholarly uh, specialized journal and not for science, you know. Uh -huh. But in the first place, Why they, they take the first paper. They, they take uh, the Stetchel and Al paper, and it was made out as a big sensation. And one um, of the co authors was then the director of the Max Planck Institute for History of Science, and, and uh, afterwards, the Max Planck Society had to to say she is not responsible for him what he wrote. I mean, uh, that tells you something, you know. Um, so it's a, co I mean, it's a historical question, but <laughs> since, <laughs> since we always like to uh, uh, talk about problems which we cannot solve, we shouldn't be talking about <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the, I, I don't think there's any way to really totally settle this, because it's, it's possible that Einstein actually calculated the had, had these equations before he published them. He could have done, he could have calculated them the week earlier and then decided <laughs> to speak to speak on November 18th on the Mercury perihelion procession, even though he had the final equations, he thought the Mercury maybe he thought the Mercury perihelion was, was even bigger news. So he so he could have had them without a, a week before he actually 
published or, or, or spoken about. Could write a science fiction novel. And who knows? <laughs> How do we help it? You know? You know, and it's possible that Hilbert had them and, and didn't put them in the paper. You know, it's possible. Yes, I, I don't know. But, but I guess the, <laughs> it's okay. At least we, we know that the major contribution to the theory is Einstein. Yes. But, but there are other people also contribute to Definitely. it. Definitely. But let's say... Yes. Hilbert, Hilbert did some important important things here. Yeah. So, so let's say... Uh, uh, if Einstein has a different personality, I mean, or, or in case uh, Einstein and Goldsman uh, uh, find the right one at the 1913, then it will be called einstein Grossman series. And also at, the, at that time, suppose Hilbert gets uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the right uh, variation principle, and Einstein still stick to uh, that the, the choice of stress and tensor should be zero. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then if he gets it very strong, very strong, then people must call it Hilbert theory. Yeah. Uh, but if he gets mildly strong after a, a certain period of time, people will call it Einstein Hilbert theory. Also, so all those are just uh, not, not the real situation. So, so, so that means <laughs> in doing research, you, you, you do not find all the way for yourself. You have to. Uh, take the uh, real situation, I mean, not against everybody else. <laughs> I think we, we call it Einstein's theory, but we call it Hilbert Lagrangian. Yeah, we, we should, call it the Hilbert energy of man. Yeah, we should. And we I should think that's that. fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, no, I call it always the Hilbert energy of man, too, when I call it the Hilbert Einstein Lagrangian, because the uh, Hilbert was certainly the first for the Lagrangian, yeah. and it was Einstein's theory. I mean, there's no doubt that. That Hilbert uh, that took the physical ideas of Einstein about half a year before that event. Uh, Einstein visited Göttingen and gave lectures on his theory. Uh, on the other hand, Hilbert, uh, from about 1902, started to axiomatize physics. Right. He tried to, to, to find an axiomatic system. He was, as Einstein said, a little bit naive but with respect to physics. So, I mean, you can follow it up that in 1902 he gave a, semi uh, a seminar and his assistant had to organize it for thermodynamics. 1903 for platino mechanics, then for atomic physics. So he looked into the axiomatics of physics right. uh, ground um, starting from 1902 and, and one of his students was Weiss. Who, uh, and, and so, I mean, there is a whole sequence of students of Einstein who study physics in order to build up an axiomatic system. So Hilbert was not a, a new in the subject in, at, at all. So he had aspirations, what he did in mathematics, now to do for physics, you know. And he thought that's not so simple, not, not so complicated. And, and, uh, so both people have their merits and, and can be glad that we know what they thought. <laughs> Okay. I'm not stopping the lectures. I'm just interrupting. First, let, let us thank Professor <laughs> Kell for the very <laughs> The reason I'm clapping is because there are several announcements for me. First is that uh, students who are here, uh, they can claim their transportation uh, fees from the NCTS, and they don't have to claim it even today. They can collect all your tickets and claim it at the end of the lectures. Okay? So, students. Then, Professor Gung is organizing a workshop on November 2nd. You, you are the organizer for this one. <laughs> so, you are organizing a workshop on November 2nd. What, what, will, he be, what will it be about? The title of the workshop. Gravitation problem. <laughs> okay, so he encourages all to attend and also maybe present, you know, present your work on the November 2nd workshop on Saturday. Coming Saturday, right? Yeah, second, right? Right, and uh, any more okay. okay, so the next lecture will be on Friday, and the uh, Professor Hell's lecture, and we look forward to that. Okay.